Welcome to Reformers Life Broadcast, a ministry of Dream Life Church International, where Dr. John A. Tashola is the senior minister. Dr. Tashola is also the founder and president of Ecclesia Word Ministries International, the International Bible Training Center, and Reformers Ministries International, a network of cutting-edge ministries and leaders. He's the best-selling author of several life-changing books. His strong teaching and preaching displays the incredible strength of the mandate upon his life. It is our prayer and desire that through this message, you will be imparted, changed, and encouraged to pursue the Lord. So prepare your heart now and expect from the Lord as we go into the message already in progress. God has orchestrated that the body has to go through physical changes in order for that baby to pass through the womb in a healthy manner. If the womb does not change its position, the baby cannot successfully pass through. Right? So even in the pain, at the point of birth, there's joy. Amen? So when we're going through the pains of crisis, we need to be saying, look, I'm going to be rejoicing as part of the end result. Everything, that, every form of blessing there has to be a corresponding crisis in order for that birth to take place. Amen. Hallelujah. So membership it has its privileges. Failure, Jesus, some principles. Failure to respond to crisis will limit your access to the blessings allocated for your life. You know, the things that God wants you to have, it's not like you got to tell him what you need. He already has these things waiting for you. All of the things that you need, he has them waiting for you like in a piñata. He's just saying, look, you need to increase so you can hit that thing so the blessings can come showering over your life. Without crisis, many believers lack the wherewithal to advance on their own. That's key. We don't advance on our own. Crisis can appear as poor living conditions, a challenging work environment, a demanding college professor. I remember a uh, uh, deaconess was going through nursing school and there was a, a professor who must, she was like an army person or something. And she, I mean, she put it on her. You know, she re, it was like one of those people to say, this person has been sent here to determine whether you are going to be who you claim you want to be. How many of y'all had to, that person that you had to go through and you tried to take other classes because you heard about the person? And you, you tried to go to registration, and it was like, the only way you're moving forward is you got to get this person. And, and, and we need those kind of situations in life. Because we need to see, are you really who you say you are? Do you really want that position? Do you really want that degree? And there's people who will know, because they have to face that person, they say, I'm not doing it. It's not worth it. You're supposed to use that crisis to get to the thing that God has for you. Use that crisis. Don't run. Come on, y'all. People who went through, there was always a person that you felt like the enemy. Hired that person. Put them right there just for you. It looked like they were zeroing on, in on you. But when you really look at it, it's, those are some of the people who some of the things they imparted you with are still with you today. You know, we always love the teachers that, oh, yeah, no, yeah. But they, don't, they haven't made any, they haven't had an influence on you. The only way they've influenced you is to help you desire for things to be easy. And life is not easy. So those people that really put it to you, when you see them now, because you got that thing, I, I really thank you, you know. You really helped me of all of the professors I had. And sometimes it's just because they have a heart. They want to weed out the folks who don't belong there. Because you don't need to be in a place when all crisis and all heck breaks loose and you go to pieces. Baruch Publishing proudly presents Dr. John A. Tashola and his new release, Apostolic Lessons for Apostolic Leaders, Volume 2. The success of an apostolic center is often based on the growth and maturity of its leaders. But growth and maturity doesn't happen overnight. 
It is a deliberate and conscious process that is pursued and embraced that eventually brings an apostolic leader to a place of strength in his anointing. It is in this place of strength and maturity that he functions in to build that which God has placed on his heart. Dr. John Tashola in this powerful book deals with very significant strategies and lessons that every apostolic leader must learn and embrace in order to mature in his anointing and pursuit. This book is divided into four sections. Each section deals with pertinent apostolic strategies and lessons. In this book, you will learn the following. Fathering in an apostolic church. Protecting against burnout. The struggle with apostolic leadership relationships the pitfalls of apostolic leadership, and much more. Available online at ecclesiaword.org or by calling us at 718-904-8530. Order your copy of Apostolic Lessons for Apostolic Leaders Volume 2 for the ministry gift of only $15. Today, get this resource that will teach you the proper strategies for safeguarding and maturing apostolic leaders. You go to pieces. And some of us, we think we are supposed to be certain things, but if you can't get through those people that God has put there to prove you, God has put some people in places to prove you. So let them prove you, right? Amen. Because once you get through those people, it's like, yeah. You made it through so-and-so? <laughs> you got to be here. Yeah, you anointed to do that thing. And it's a good thing. Hallelujah. So we need to look at our living any situation. And we need to look past that thing and say, I'm going I'm to use this situation. And see, God will meet you. Because when I, when I went to go through the process, Apostle Noah, all heck broke loose when we was trying to get our house. And the enemy even told me, he said, you'll never have a house. He said, you're from the projects, you'll never have a house. I was on, I remember the place I was at, 112th Street in Lenox Avenue. I was going to the train, he said, you'll never have a house because you're from the projects. The devil told me that, and he's a liar. <laughs> Amen? So we need to stop listening to, you know, to the lies of the devil and move forward. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy and move forward. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy and what? Move forward. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the next couple of minutes, we're going to move on to uh, chapter 2. And we're going to look at the requirements of calculated commitment. Because commitment in these... If you're going to be successful in commitment, you need to make a calculated commitment. You really need to know what you're getting into. Because too many times folks have jumped into things. It's like jumping into 15 feet of water thinking you're jumping into three feet. You're going to be over your head and can't swim. Hallelujah. So we're going to read Luke 14 and 26. And it talks about with Jesus just laying down what the job description was in order to follow him. He said, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to let you know what you need to do. He says, if any man come to me and hate not his father, his mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life. Or not that you have to hate other people. You got to hate your own life. He what? Cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, his own share of pain, of crisis, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. In other words, if little things that happen are going to stop you when you're calling me, oh, Jesus, I, I can't come today, you cannot be my disciple. And that's one of the things he's really looking for. We were even talking about it as pastors. We need discipleship. People need to be discipled. People need to really learn how to live the Christ life. Verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down second, first, and count the cost 
whether he have sufficient to finish it. So let's read. Calculated commitment is the level of commitment where you learn how to what? Hate your own. And, and some people say, y'all crazy? Why you hate your own? But it's a reason for it. Hate your own. It is when you esteem the plan and purpose of God, what? More highly than your own personal agenda. And you're going to be blessed as soon as you come to the revelation that your own personal agenda is very unimportant in comparison to God's plan for your life. Because I tried my own personal agenda for 35 years, and it was like I was on a hamster wheel. You know how you're running, and you ain't going nowhere, right? It wasn't until I put my plan down and embraced God's plan that true advancement began to take place in my life. In making this kind of commitment, there's three things that must take place. Let's look at the first thing for calculated commitment. First, calculated commitment demands not only separation, but attachment. So you got to separate from one thing, and you got to attach to another thing. Jesus' commitment to the Father, page 11, took him away from his disciples. He was uh, withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, Luke 22 and 41. Your commitment to a place, region, vision, or church will separate and detach you from some people and things in your life. And that's okay. Because we can go, God has me now at a place where I'm now reconnecting with folks that I ran with years ago because I have a heart for them. You know, I, I just had lunch with a guy who was in jail for eight years, and I was kind of avoiding You know, I really just didn't want to deal with it. I'm going to be honest with you because I didn't know where his head was. And God said, I have you going now, going and reconnecting with these people to begin to disciple these people. Because once we reach a certain level of maturity, we're supposed to now go out and find folks who can use what we have. Because the, the way it's supposed to work is we were discipled, right? And now we can stand on our own. We're supposed to be discipling others, not pastoring others, discipling others. You don't have to be a pastor to disciple somebody. You don't have to be a church leader to disciple somebody. Amen? All we're told to teaching them how to do is live a Christ-like life. That's all we need to do. If you have been blessed, changed, and imparted by today's message, we would like to extend an opportunity for you to partner with us to impact the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Dear friends, join with us, and together we can change the world. Partner with us and share in what God is doing through Reformers Life Broadcast. Call us at 718-904-8530 or visit us at www.ecclesiaword.org today. by this teaching, and we look forward to being with you again. To request this teaching in its entirety and for a complete catalog of all of our books, CDs, and DVDs, please visit us at EcclesiaWord.org. Remember that you are a reformer, and you walk in the anointing of reformation, and your faith in God is changing your circumstances.